going on, church family? It's your boy, Breno, coming at you again with another week of DTS Deeper Than Sunday. We're so happy that you're here uh, to join us. Um, if this is your first time here on DTS, we take a deeper dive into the previous Sunday sermon and opening up hearing different perspectives and testimonies and practical applications uh, to walk out this sermon through the week. We believe here at FFM that what's preached on Monday is meant to live out Monday through Saturday. So wherever you're listening right now, we hope and pray that this video of DTS helps you in your walk with Jesus Christ. Before we jump into this week's message, I want to give my guests an opportunity to introduce themselves and a- answer the icebreaker of the day, which is, what is your favorite day of the week and why? I'm Leora. I think my favorite day of the week is Saturday because I get a slower start to the day. Like I can mm-hmm. take my time getting up. I don't have to like clock into work. I can just take my time and just hang out before the day gets started. Nice. I know it should be Saturday, (laughs) but for me it's not. My name is Lynette, and um, my favorite day of the week is Monday. Crazy. And I try to explain why. I try to understand that myself sometimes, but I think it's because I'm very task oriented, Mm. and so like every Monday it's like a new beginning. Like I get to, Mm. you know, take another stab at that list of things to do, and yeah, I love Mondays. Mm -hmm. That's, and it's honestly inspiring. I need to <laughs> practice that one. Uh, my name is Bruno, and uh, my favorite day of the week is Thursday. So I know that's super random. Yeah. But for my schedule, um, Thursday is like Friday for me because okay. uh, we work here at the office from Sunday to Thursday. Mm-hmm. But then I give drum lessons Friday evenings and Saturday mornings. So mm-hmm. I can't sleep in on Saturdays because I'm working as well. Friday night I'm working as well. So I like Thursday nights because, you know, uh, I get to sleep in Friday morning. And Thursday night, I love being at worship practice. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. so, yeah, Thursday is the one for me. You know, I think it could be a little bit, too, because we farm. And so we don't have set hours. Mm-hmm. And so it's not uh-huh. like we don't have that clock out on Friday night. Yeah, We're done yeah. for right. the weekend. So. I don't know. That's That's probably That probably plays into it a little bit. Oh, for sure. All right, you guys ready to jump in? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, Pastor Don has been taking us into a Easter sermon series Mm -hmm. as Easter is coming up this Sunday, which you should come and have church with us this upcoming Mm -hmm. Sunday, uh, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. 7 a.m. is our sunrise service. Mm -hmm. Uh, Corey... Carpenter, her son, is going to be preaching. Mm -hmm. So we're super excited about that. And then uh, there will be breakfast right after. And then uh, at 10 o'clock, we'll have our normal main service. So please come and have Easter with us because we love Easter here at FFM. And, you know, especially with the sermons, Don, he loves doing Easter series every year. Mm -hmm. And he's been taking us through this journey, the road from death to life. Mm -hmm. And he breaks down a specific road each and every week. And this week uh, was titled The Narrow Road. Mm -hmm. So the main point we get from this is the fact that the narrow road is one of decision, discipline, and desire. Mm -hmm. It is a road from death to life. In your life, does desire dictate decision or does decision produce the proper desire? Mm -hmm. This was a really good question that he gave us from the beginning. And he said the answer to that question is determined by your discipline. Mm -hmm. Choose the narrow road. And it will lead you to life everlasting. Mm-hmm. So it was an amazing, convicting, and practical sermon mm-hmm. on what it looks like to walk out the narrow road. How do we do that practically? And just to see that it's worth it, you know. So yeah. I want to hear from you guys. You know, what is something that stood out to you from this message? Mm-hmm. Oh, I will go first. Go um, the <coughs> biggest thing was the question that he asked us. It was near the beginning of the sermon, and it was, what's the object of your passion and so I just had to think about that it's just a good question to keep at the top of my mind is what is the object of my passion is the object of my passion me mm-hmm. and what mm-hmm. I can achieve or is the object of my passion living for Christ and just always and not in like a religious way mm-hmm. but it's important to keep that at the front of my mind so that I don't mm-hmm. get caught up in the world you know yeah. and it's like sure. I think about Jesus and what was the object of his passion right it mm-hmm. was serving God Mm-hmm. And always, and there's no, never any doubt about that. And that's the life I want to live. You know, I mm-hmm. want to, I want others to know that the object of my passion is Jesus. Right. You know. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I kept thinking about um, that if we truly want to live, we need to die to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there's so many things that try to distract us and pull our attention away from the things that God has called us to, mm-hmm. whether it's Him, of course, yeah. or our families, our relationships, you know, with our spouses. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just easy to get pulled away because those relationships can be hard. Mm-hmm. And um, to truly live and have a victorious life and to be successful mm-hmm. in those relationships, it means dying to ourselves, yeah. which is the narrow road. Mm-hmm. I mean, so often, especially when it comes to, I just have had marriage on my mind a lot lately. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to that, it's, you know, the world says um, a lot of maybe negative friendships would pull us away from doing the hard things to make things like that work, mm-hmm. to make our relationships work. And mm-hmm. so um, we have to die to ourselves if we want to truly live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that <clears throat> stood out to me was when Don said every road, every, every choice on your road has a mm-hmm. destination. Yeah. And yeah. He, he was saying that pointing, you know, to the young people, but Man, I received that too. Mm-hmm. Right. Just think about the fact that every decision we make each and every day, no matter the season, mm-hmm. uh, and no matter how big of a decision it is, right. there is a destination. Yep. Yep. And I bet many of us would uh, uh, hesitate and prevent ourselves from making certain decisions mm-hmm. if that would be the forefront of our mind. Yeah. Right. You know, like, okay, mm-hmm. making this dumb decision right now mm-hmm. will lead me to making or having a terrible destination, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. whatever whatever right. that looks like. Yeah. Right. And even like on the flip side, thinking, okay, this good decision doesn't make sense right now, but mm-hmm. I trust God yeah. in the fact that there is a good destination. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. good. It can be so easy to get caught up in the here and now and to think mm-hmm. about just like this moment, but yeah. it's so important to keep like a more broad view and think about how that decision is going to affect you. And right. that's something that especially like I didn't think about when I was younger and sometimes I don't even think about now, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I want to do this because it feel good. It feels good right now. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's like, how is that deci- decision going to affect me a week or two or even a few right. months down the road, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's, it's in every area of our life. It's yeah. physical, mm-hmm. it's financially, it's spiritually, yeah. like it hits every area yeah. for sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. That's Nobody so wants good. to go to the gym right now, yeah. but we want the results from <laughs> right, it, right? Yeah. And you can't get the results without going. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Conviction on all of us. <laughs> so this week's uh, scripture is found in Matthew 7, 13 through 14. And it says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. All right, well, that takes us into our first discussion point, which is um, a road of decision to enter by the narrow gate. So we mm-hmm. make decisions every day because we are creatures of variety. We choose what time we get up, we choose what we wear, what we eat, and what we do. So a variety of decisions beg our attention every single day. In every action of life, we are confronted with a choice, and we can never evade the choice. Um, In our walk with God, sometimes we need to be reminded of the direction, purpose, and passion of the walk because we often stray from the beaten path that is laid Mm -hmm. before us. And Easter confronts us. It's waiting for our decision. Mm -hmm. So what are some major decisions you've made that drastically have changed your life for the better? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think for me, um, one big decision I made in high school is that I would not date anyone unless I was ready to pursue them. Uh, for the goal of marriage. Mm-hmm. That was a big one. Mm-hmm. And it was a tough decision just because in high school, everybody dates. Mm-hmm. Everybody, you know, has a boyfriend, has a girlfriend. And even, like, there was a time in high school where all of my friends had a girlfriend and I was the only one that didn't. So there was that temptation just to date somebody just mm-hmm. because they're available. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but God really, like, placed a conviction in my heart to say, you know what, you know, you have to make the decision Mm -hmm. if you're going to trust me in this area of your life. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because it was something that I've always desired. Like, I've always desired to, um, you know, have a relationship and have a girlfriend. But more deeper than that, you know, be married one day. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that was a major decision. You know, there was a lot of times I had to say no. Mm -hmm. um, But... It drastically changed my life for the better Mm -hmm. uh, because no other options in my life compared to what I have now with Mm -hmm. my wife, Juliana. Mm -hmm. It's 
<laughs> man, it's it's black and white. Like yeah. no, like no hesitation. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's, that was a huge blessing. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. How about you? So I would say coming to firm when Elijah and I started coming to firm, that was a big decision. And I think back and it didn't really feel like a big decision at the time, but now looking back, it was mm -hmm. a big decision for us to make. And so it was during COVID and all of that when a lot of churches were not meeting in person and we were really desiring that connection, people, you know. There's only so much time that I can spend with Elijah before we start going <laughs> crazy, right? Like, Me too. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, it just happened so naturally. We were at a graduation party and Ryan was there and we were all chatting. And then later in the car, Elijah and I were like, why don't we try firm? Yeah. And it seemed, we were like, why haven't we thought of that before? So you're giving Ryan credit? Is that yeah. what you're doing? Yep, Ryan gets the credit for that. <laughs> And so we came and we have never looked back. We love mm -hmm. it here. And it's been so cool to watch Elijah grow spiritually and mm -hmm. to even in myself see such spiritual growth in the mm, a year. It hasn't been. Yes, it's been over a year. It's yeah, because we started longer. coming in 2020. Yeah. yeah. So this will be mm -hmm. two years. August mm -hmm. will yeah. be two years. But it's just crazy to look back and see. I feel like I've grown so much more in these two years here than I have of my whole life of being mm. a Christian, you know? Yeah. And um, it's just been cool to see, like, our like our gifts are being spoken into and mm. we're, like, encouraged to use those gifts and we have mm. resources and tools to be able to use those gifts. And, um, yeah, so it's just been really encouraging yeah. and I'm so glad that we decided to do that. Mm. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I mean, same. <laughs> so much. Um, and honestly, you just gave me a thought that mm. I never had before. So like, first of all, you and your husband are amazing, mm -hmm. and you guys has been you guys have been a, such a huge blessing mm -hmm. to our ministry, and it just felt like, okay, yeah, there was a hole that was missing that we mm -hmm. didn't know, right? Yeah. And it was mm -hmm. Eli and Lior that mm -hmm. we needed, mm -hmm. and what I really appreciate about you guys is that you guys have been all in, mm -hmm. right? When I think about it, it's like when passion and decision come together, mm -hmm. it creates purpose, mm -hmm. right? That's so right? Good. So yeah. you had this passion mm -hmm. in your heart. Mm -hmm. And you brought that passion to making a decision, mm -hmm. a hard decision, mm -hmm. but it was part of the narrow road. Yeah. And that passion pushed you into purpose mm -hmm. where you guys are now leading the youth. Mm -hmm. You're discipling others. You're being discipled. You're growing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's because you applied that passion with decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, so good. Something that I just, I just thought yeah. of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy, too, because when we did start coming here, I fully expected to just be like a spectator. I was like, mm -hmm. we're going to go to church. We're going to do the thing, you mm -hmm. know, sit and listen. And then we're going to peace out immediately after and like not talk to anybody. And like we didn't, obviously Elijah knows everybody and their grandmother. So we can't just like, we, can, we couldn't true. just leave, you know, on a Sunday afternoon. But it's been such a blessing to not be just a spectator. Yeah. It's been so good mm -hmm. to get involved and to help out with the youth yeah. and things like that. So It's hard to remember. I mean, it surprises me that it's only been that long that you've been here because yeah. it feels like... It's just such a beautiful fit. It mm. feels like it's been a long time. Thanks, guys. In a good way. That's encouraging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so interestingly enough, we're all youth leaders. I don't yes. know if that was mentioned earlier mm -hmm. or not. And so it's been great to work with these other couples mm -hmm. um, to work with our youth, which kind of leads me to my answer. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of have two answers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the first is the same. Mm -hmm. um, we started coming to FFM I think it's been 15, over 15 years ago now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, that was a really hard decision for my husband and I to make. And um, it felt like the narrow road because it wasn't the most popular mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. opinion yeah. for us to leave. And we love our ch the, the church we had went to. We love the people there. Um, to this day, we still have good relationships with them. Um, but just feeling like God's calling us to, to do something different and just a lot of uncertainty about it all. Mm -hmm. um, but now that I look back, and especially when it comes to the youth kids, mm -hmm. and I see all the relationships that we've built through the years, and some of the really hard stories that the kids have um, experienced and we've helped them walk through, I mean, it, it just, it's hands down, it was the best decision yeah. for Tim and I to, you know, we wouldn't have had mm -hmm. that opportunity mm -hmm. um, with these kids had we not been willing to step out and do that. Um, the other one that was also a very good decision mm -hmm. that was not a fun decision <clears throat> was when I had to choose to forgive someone who had hurt me deeply. Mm -hmm. And 
when I look at what my life was like living in unforgiveness versus what it looks like to live in forgiveness, like it's a no brainer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so to me, it's like <laughs> if, if anyone listening is like, I'm going to stay on this road of unforgiveness. Like, it's not worth it. Yeah. You're the one paying the price. Right. Yeah. And it's so much better to just lay that down. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I used to struggle with forgiveness a lot. And I read this, um, was reading this devotional. And I remember it saying that forgiveness is more about me and my heart than it is the other person. It's not about pushing what they did under the rug. It's not excusing right. their actions. But it's for my heart. Mm-hmm. And that changed my view forever. And I was like, it's not... It's not yeah. worth it. It's not worth right. living in unforgiveness and bitterness and having right. to carry that. It's so worth just laying yeah. it down and living yeah. in forgiveness. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it got me another thought <laughs> I just had when you were talking about that is like, man, when it comes to traveling, there's mm-hmm. such a difference between driving and flying. Mm-hmm. So, for example, like if I if I gotta go, I got family now in Massachusetts, mm-hmm. and I have if I have the option between driving and flying. I'm going to choose flying. Yeah. Right. You know, 15 hours in the car versus two hours on a plane. Right. Mm-hmm. Definitely rather have that. It is a lot more expensive to hop on a plane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. once I'm on the plane mm-hmm. and I'm flying over all those states and all those highways, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? It was worth it. Yeah. You know? And it's, and it's like the same way in our walks. When we choose to walk the narrow path, mm-hmm. that first step on the narrow path, that first turn on the narrow path, mm-hmm. it's like... Oh, yeah. man, this is, this is, there's yeah. a cost to this. Yeah. It's expensive. Mm-hmm. But as you like go through the journey of the narrow road, you're like, mm-hmm. okay, this was a no brainer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I did it. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's so good. That's good. That takes us into our second point, a road of discipline and difficult is the way. So it's a common thing amongst all of us to look for the easy way when it comes to the things we face in life. When we hear the word discipline, we are quick to amen its importance outwardly, but inwardly we cringe. (laughs) (laughs) Discipline is always equated with hard work and doing something that we don't want to do to get where we want to be or have what we want to have. The narrow road requires disciplined thinking, disciplined prayer, and disciplined study of the word. Mm -hmm. Um, So what are some practical ways you stay disciplined on the narrow road? For myself, it comes down to my time with the Lord each day Mm -hmm. and I was just telling you about this yesterday I think how in the mornings I wake up and me being task oriented I'm thinking about all the things I got to do but then it's just like no get your time with the Lord in first and so um yeah I have found that just taking time I try to read I try to actually write out scripture and then I write out my prayer Mm -hmm. um as well and Mm -hmm. when I have a set like this is what I'm gonna do um in my devotional time and then there's other other areas of my life too where it's like this is what I'm gonna do these Mm -hmm. are the boundaries this is how this is what it looks like (laughs) that's what works well for me Uh and it's like when I have that already just that's been decided Uh ahead of time then it helps me to stay disciplined yeah so Mm -hmm. that's good yeah for me is pretty much the same thing Mm -hmm. um because I I'm not a disciplined person in nature. Mm-hmm. I am naturally a <laughs> go with the flow uh. procrastinator, <laughs> um, and I work well last minute. I feel that. <laughs> um, but I've definitely seen a change when I've made the choice mm-hmm. to be disciplined. Um, one way that Don said it in the vision series, I really think it's definitely been a uh, frequent saying in our household is like eating the frog. Mm-hmm. You guys remember that sermon yep. talking mm-hmm. about eat the frog, I like do. doing the thing that you don't want to do, but mm-hmm. you got to do it. Every time in my life, I got to do something with discipline. My wife's like, baby, you got to eat the frog. Mm-hmm. Eat the frog. So Why couldn't it have been like eat the cake? Yeah. yeah something. I'd much rather do make that. Make it better. Yeah. <laughs> it applies a little too well. Yeah. So I think for me, in a, like, mm-hmm. of course, discipline, being disciplined with my word, but surrounding myself with people mm-hmm. who will keep me accountable. Mm-hmm. And, like, my wife is a great person who she knows where I'm weak with that. Mm-hmm. And you guys know my wife's very mm-hmm. strong and very um, <laughs> of, uh, encouraging yeah. Yeah. with her passion. Yeah. And she does that with me with my discipline sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it's really good. Mm-hmm. So I say, yeah. like, if you're struggling with finding uh, discipline in your life, seek accountability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And come to people in your life and say, yo, I struggle with my Bible reading or mm-hmm. I struggle with you know, uh, socially drinking or doing mm-hmm. these things, like whatever it looks like yeah. for us to uh, ease our way back to the wide path. Like mm-hmm. find those people in your life that will say, yo, 
eat the frog, bro. Yeah. yeah. You got to do it. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Those were the two things that I had written down was um, routine and accountability. I remember Dave and Elaine came to young adults right before they left. Mm -hmm. yeah. And someone asked a question along the lines of how do they make sure that they're spending time with the Lord every day? And Dave had said that for him, it's important that he spends time with the Lord at the same time every day, mm -hmm. because if it's a part of his routine, he's much more likely to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that I'm great at yet, but mm -hmm. it's something I'm working on to just make it like the first thing I do in the morning, yeah. because then that's set already in my routine. Mm -hmm. And then I can do, instead of being like, okay, I'll do it later tonight, but then later tonight when something else comes up, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. And, then I don't end up doing it. And so, yeah. and it's, yeah. I just think about the times where I have just cut out time to spend with the Lord and how much better I feel after that. You right. know, like I feel like I'm setting myself up for success when I yeah. just then do the thing That's and spend true. time with the Lord, right. you know? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just accountability, getting someone who you know is going to keep you accountable and um, to what you said you're going to do. I love, we have, um, a little chat on Instagram with the girls from the youth group who wanted to be involved. It's like an accountability thing mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. they're writing their scriptures out and mm -hmm. that's been really cool to see. So even something small like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Man, guys, thank you for yeah. hopping on here and just sharing you guys' hearts. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, Every week here on DTS, we end and close out the, the video with a call to action, which is just a practical application, just a response of what we need to do um, in this walk with God. So it's like you hear all these things, these different stories, these different testimonies, and you're in this place of like, okay, I desire the same thing. I desire to walk down that narrow road. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to make the right decisions. I want to have discipline, and I desire the narrow road. And my just encouragement to you this week, this week's call to action is just spend 10 minutes in prayer today asking God for help on the narrow road. Mm -hmm. It starts with, you know, that decision. Make that decision mm -hmm. to make the decision. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because if you're just all around like, oh, I, I wanna, I wanna be pure. Uh, I, I wanna stop smoking. Um, I wanna stop cussing. Like you're not, you're not gonna stop. Mm -hmm. You have to be intentional right. about being intentional. Mm -hmm. So like, like turn off your phone for ten minutes. Go to your bedroom. Mm -hmm. Go on a walk. Like keep your phone in the house. Go on a walk. Whatever you gotta do. Just spend ten minutes and be honest with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Be transparent and say, God, I desire to walk the path you have established for my life. Please help me and show me what I need to do. Is it waking up every morning and reading? I'm going to do it. Should I find accountability? I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Whatever it looks like, seek him today, and he will give you an answer. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Good. Yeah. God, we love you. Thank you so much for this opportunity to open up your word and learn more about you. Mm -hmm. And God, I just pray for each and every person listening to this video and for us here as well to help us, God, on this walk on the narrow road. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, your word even says it's not an easy road, but it's worth it because it leads to everlasting life. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you for the beautiful love story of Easter. And I pray that this story can be on the forefront of our minds this week as we think about you and worship you. We give you all the praise and glory today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much yeah. once again for hopping on here. And thank you guys for tuning in with us here on this week's episode of DTS Deeper Than Sunday, where we take a deeper dive into the things of God here at FFM. And speaking of FFM, we better see y'all uh -huh. this upcoming Sunday at a church, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. here in Centerville. You do not want to miss it. You guys have a great week. God bless. We'll see you next week. Peace out.